Hey guys, my name is Avinash and I'm from the Firepower team. And today we're going to learn about configuring clusters on Firepower 7000 and 8000 series devices. Let's go to the basics, right? We need to know what exactly we are configuring before we can actually configure it, right? So let's think, what's a cluster? A cluster is a group of devices working together, doing one common feature, right? So what's a cluster? It's a set of devices working together and syncing configuration data. So what happens is in 7000 and 8000 series sensors, there are certain configuration that is synced between clusters. And uh, this configuration helps to maintain redundancy in the network. So what happens is, for example, if you have a, a cluster of two uh, sensors in your network, so what happens when traffic passes through the network? It passes through only one of the devices at one time. And when that device goes down, the other one automatically becomes the active device. So what, what you're gaining here is redundancy and high availability. So there is no loss of traffic. Clustering in general, you can configure for inline sets, you can configure them for passive interfaces. It, there are multiple deployment options, which will probably be covered in, in the next few videos. So to configure clusters, there are certain prerequisites that need to be done before you can actually configure the cluster successfully. So initially, both devices must have the same software version. And when I say software version, I mean exactly the same patch number so if you have a device which is 5403 and you have another device that is 5404 well you can't cluster them they have to be the same software version up to the patch they must have the same vdb and they must have the exact same license and they must be exactly the same so if you have a device that has a protection and control license and you want to cluster it with another device which probably was part of another stack or cluster and it had an extra license of malware and you bring it here and you want to cluster it well that's not going to happen so the licenses must be exactly same you should be seeing protection control on both the devices so clustering is different from stacking in a way that clustering need the net mods to be exactly in the same slot on both the devices so if you have a clustering if you have a net mod in slot A, you need a similar net mod in slot A on the next cluster device. The exception here is a stacking net mod. So stacking net mod is considered as non-existent in a cluster configuration. So what happens is, for example, if you had a device which was in a stack before, and at this point you want to bring it back in and put it into a new cluster, you just need to put the same slots, net mods that you put on cluster A on the device A and then put it in a device B. As long as these two net mods are in the same slot, they will be clusterable. It doesn't matter if slot two has a stacking net mod, it doesn't matter. It's considered as a net mod that does not exist as from a cluster perspective. They must be identical hardware modules. You cannot cluster an 8140 with an 8260 for obvious reasons because 8260 has higher power and 8140 is just a smaller version of it. So the whole point of clustering is to maintain the same config and provide high availability. So you want to mirror the config on one device to the other so that when there is a when there is a drop in traffic or when there is a network downtime, there is no the you don't have to understand which one do I have to send it through. The cluster decides that. That's the whole beauty of cluster, right? And lastly, we need to check if there is a NAT policy configured and this is important because if there is a device which was previously having some NAT and at this point it doesn't have and you didn't try to put it in the cluster, the NAT config will still remain there because you haven't actually removed it from the device, right? So it will throw an error saying that they are not synced or they don't have config with them. That could be an issue and needs to be fixed. So let's let's go and do the demo then. I got a set of devices ready here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the prerequisites first, right? So we go here, we go to devices, and at this stage we would need to check a few stuff which we already discussed. We need to check the software version, we need to check the hardware version, 
we need to check if all the policies are the same and we can go ahead and create the cluster so as you can see here we got two devices they are in a good state and this one is a 38140 this two is a 318140 version 5404 version 5404 they are the same they have the same license they have the same health policy and the default policy and they have no access policy applied so a thing to remember here is it is not mandatory that health policy and system policy needs to be the same but it is better you have it as the same it, it is better because you know it is uniform throughout on both devices just for confirmation we'll just go check the net mods just in case you know there's some issue so I just clicked on one device and we see that there is there are two there is an S1P2 1000 base T net mod here Ethernet ports there's a net mod here Ethernet ports and a stacking cable here stacking net mod now we go back to devices so at this stage we're gonna check if the position of the net mods and the actual net mods for both the devices are the same or not so we see here there is one ethernet net mod there's one ethernet net mod here and there's a stacking net mod so as far as the cluster is concerned this is virtually this virtually does not exist so it is just a blank slot so we got we got our interfaces we got uh, all our interfaces and net mods in place we got the licenses in place we got policies in place just for your information, it is possible to cluster two devices which do not have a license, but they must both be in an unlicensed state. Otherwise, it will not stack uh, or cluster per se. And uh, they should have the exact same access policy. So how do we cluster? Well, we go to add here, right on top. We go to add, create a cluster. We give a name. I am going to give I am I'm going to make 206 as the active and I'm going to make 204 as the backup so one thing to remember here before I cluster is the difference between active standby and primary and secondary so at this point I am going to configure them as active backup so a primary device is the device which you create as primary and it stays primary throughout but a uh, secondary device is going to stay secondary throughout but can be active as well at some point of time so just just to bring that out there's a difference between active standby setup and primary secondary setup primary secondary is final and fixed but active standby keeps changing according to traffic flow so then all i got to do is click on cluster if everything goes well and we actually have no configuration issues this will cluster successfully and if not you will see a few errors if you see this error all members of a HA config must have up-to-date policies deployed to them and the following devices are out date so this basically means that this might have been in a cluster or it might just have been a standalone device but at this stage the policy applied to it is out of date and it's not synced with the DC without having sync policies and being exactly same on both the devices you cannot cluster it so the solution to this error would be apply the existing policies make sure they are the same as the, the, the device which you want to cluster with and that this error should go away the second error that we might see is devices are not properly configured to be part of a cluster with another device check software version hardware version licensing and apply NAT policy so this is basically all the prerequisites in one message so if any of these prerequisites are not met the clustering will fail and you will get this error and you will probably need to do more troubleshooting check var uh, log messages and actually see what is missing and what is not configured clustering takes time and if there, if there are no issues though you it will take close to 10 to 15 minutes to actually cluster and if there is an issue if you have some policies which are not matching or something like that well it will fail at this point and you will see a message one of those messages which we just saw so 
this probably will be successful and we, we can just wait for it to be and I can show it to you if you notice here it is actually at this point you will see a rolling circle right so what what's happening is the device is uh, information is being sent to the primary device first the active device which we have set right it's going to that first it will then configure it on the standby device and after that it will create the cluster so at this point it is deploying policies to the active device after which it will go to the standby device we see cluster blr cluster added that's a good thing so that means the cluster has been formed and us have been deployed and as you can see our cluster has been deployed so this is it from my side and i would like to thank you for watching